class with the emphasis on foods that are uh, seasonal and have been foraged. So two of the things that we are cooking with are wild leeks. So they grow in the forest around uh, Stratford, actually grow across Canada. Um, and also we'll be using fiddleheads, which again grow wild in the area around here as well. So once you know how to use the ingredients and how to clean them and how to, how to prepare them, then you're not afraid of them. And then that way you can utilize them in any number of dishes. So this comes from a little trout farm, okay? Uh, it's just to the west of here, okay? There's a couple of um, ways you can deal with it. One thing you always want to do is whenever dealing with fish like this is to make sure that you take off any moisture because these things can be a little bit slippery and then that's when you can get into some trouble. So when we're dealing with trout of this kind, we can, two options, you can leave the skin on or you can take the skin off. I like to have the skin on. I think it gives it more flavor. Okay, so um, it's your option though. If you want to take it off, we can certainly take it off. This is a very ancient filleting knife that was, comes from Canadian Tire in their camping section. It's been around the block a few times. Um, so the only thing that we really have to do with this is to take off the belly meat, which is accomplished like that. The only thing left to do on this is to take out the pin bones. All the way along the center of the fish, there are these little bones that were its rib cage. Okay? So those have to be removed or else they'll get caught in your throat. Okay? So it's not a terribly difficult process, but you do need a special tool. And I have a couple of these. Okay? So these are fish tweezers. Okay? And you can get any tweezers uh, will do, as long as they're not too sharp, because if they're too sharp, you can uh, uh, snap the bone off. Okay? So it starts sort of almost the middle of the fish, just sort of to the fatter end, just a little bit. And generally, pin bones go to about two thirds of the way down the fish. Okay? They don't go all the way to the very end, the tail. And then you simply grab your tweezers and you quickly and efficiently. Okay, so that's the bones. Pull it out. See, they're quite long. All right. And one more. And that's it. So, it only took what? Just a few seconds, right? Okay, so it's pretty easy to do. And then for even cooking, you just want to make sure that if the bits that are very thin, you just want to get rid of it. It's, uh, it's just presentation wise, it doesn't look all that, that lovely. We use local ingredients, um, fiddleheads, leeks, trout, mushrooms, eggplant, eggplant um, and how to cook them um, and use minimal seasoning and make a good dish. Mm -hmm. We'll cook up our fish and then we'll do it sort of a plate it in a restaurant style. All right, so we'll saute this and then we can uh, use some of our uh, forged ingredients to go along with it. All right, and then for a sauce, um, we can uh, play around with some of the things that we, we find out front <coughs> and make a sauce to accompany it. To go with the trout, of course, we'll be using a little bit of onion. Actually, we won't be using for the trout. We won't use the onions. We won't use shallots for the trout because we, we'll be using in the ramps. Okay? So we'll saute that, <coughs> use some of this, and then I think if we have some green component to go with it, it would be very lovely. Oh, beautiful. So we have some wild arugula. Okay? So it's going to be a very green plate, but such is life. The, the theme of the class was come what may. So it was to do an emphasis on things that are coming into season in the spring. So 
luckily we have a really early growing season here in Stratford. So the things that we had available today for us were um, we had wild leeks, also called rants. So we had a bunch of those to play with. Um, fiddleheads are beautiful. They're just coming into season right now. They're absolutely gorgeous. So we got to demonstrate how to clean them and how to properly cook them. And we also had rhubarb, which, um, which is in season right now as well. So we then took those ingredients and then we sort of foraged in the store for anything to go with it. And then we just used the ingredients that were in season, local, and from the co-op. Okay, so I just got our eggplant cut up here because we're gonna be sauteing it later. But what I wanna do right now is remember I said we salt it. Kosher salt is perfect because it's the right size granule to be able to season things like that. What I can do is I can show you sort of what I had as an idea, and then everybody can grab some of their ingredients, prep up some ingredients, and then we'll all have a turn cooking stuff on the stove, and I can show you some ways and means of cooking things on the stove. I'm going to do a veg and the trout all in one pan. Okay, so you can do this at home as well. All right, you can do it all in one pan. Um, it's gonna be delicious because what will happen is the vegetables will give some of their flavor directly to the fish and vice versa, okay? And then I will plate it up on this. And then anybody who wants to try their hand at doing a little saute will certainly be allowed to do so. Today he did a lot of um, foods with foraged vegetables, so fiddleheads and leeks, both of which you see in the grocery store or I've had experience with in my family getting from the bush as a child, but didn't really know how to prepare. So it was great to have um, an idea of what to do with them. So are beautifully cleaned leeks, okay? So if you um, go forage them, they're super dirty, so you just have to give them a really, really good thorough clean, and then dry them really well. You can see how these ones are nice and dry. They'll keep a lot longer if you dry them super, super, super well. So what I would normally do is use a um, uh, um, salad spinner, okay? And to do that. And so that's my, what I'm gonna be putting cooked fish on. All right, so I'm gonna get the vegetables started simply because I wanna keep things looking like they do in nature. I am not gonna get all fancy and cut these into sort of tortured shapes. I will, however, just make sure that I have a little bit of a trim if I need to, and if there, this is not going to cook the same as this, so I'm just going to cut this in half, okay? Just so that they're reasonably within sort of, sort of the same size. And you see where I cut the leeks? So I'm just leaving the stem. This will cook really, really quite quickly, all right? Whereas these need a bit of a saute, okay? So that's why I've separated them. That's the only reason is for different cooking times. I learned that like how you would like chop up like the um, fiddleheads, like how they would be prepared and things about like, I need to think, and like how you would like prepare rhubarb and like cook it and like how to prepare different sorts of foods. When frying, some things you want to start off with a hot frying pan, other things you don't necessarily need to, okay? I want to give these a little bit of a cook before they start to brown so I'm not putting them in a super hot pan. I'm gonna let them sort of come up to temperature and cook a little bit. So what's gonna do two things, it's gonna take a little bit of that oniony raw flavor away, all right, and it's gonna give it a little bit better mouthfeel. It's just gonna be a little bit softer to the taste. This is salt, you always salt as you go, season as you go whenever frying something. So just a little bit, okay, not too much. This is really finely granulated, okay, so just a little bit, we don't want it to be salty, okay. So that was, a, uh, that was a Canadian pinch of salt that I did there. All right. So just get these going. Okay. So for our eggplant, we want to make sure that we get rid of all that excess salt that's on it. Now these guys can be like little sponges. Okay. So you might have to add some more oil to it. All right. And we want to get a little bit of a... So just like that. Some people don't like the skin and they'll peel it. Um, I kind of like it, I like the texture of it. I think it gives it a, a different sort of a mouthfeel. So I, I tend to leave it on when I'm doing something like this. All right, and that's gonna take a couple of uh, seconds. And 
we're going to have some fiddleheads, eggplant, and because we have some lovely local pepper, we just want to give it a bit of color. So we uh, learned about how to store food properly. Um, Ian gave us a tour of the store here and we were able to figure out how best to maintain or yeah. keep our foods without them spoiling, um, which was really helpful for us. And uh, that trick that he... The scoring of the fish? The scoring of the fish to get an equal cooking uh, plane. Yeah. So I hadn't learned that before. Now, if you have a piece of fish that is sort of significantly thicker uh, in one spot, what you can do is uh, score it. Take the business part of your knife, the center, and give it a little cut. It'd be helpful if my knife was a bit sharper. Okay. Now these have, the scales are still on this fish, but they're so small that it doesn't matter. Okay. If this was a salmon, I'd scale it. If this was a red mullet, I'd scale it. But these ones are nice and tiny, and they just give a bit of a texture. Okay, so I just cut a little, all right, and that'll help the heat penetrate, all right, when we cook it. Okay, I'm going to make sure I have enough oil in my pan. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Not a lot. Add a bit. Okie doke. Skin side down. Did you only score the one thicker part? Just score the one thicker spot so that it'll cook everything will cook evenly. Okay. So we had some local trout. It's beautiful stuff. Um, it's farmed and it's farmed in a sustainable way, which you have to be careful of because there are some farmed fish that aren't necessarily that sustainable. And um, so we just wanted to keep it nice and simple. So we as a garnish, we only have one frying pan to work with, so that was a bit of a challenge. But you know, that can also be uh, necessity is the mother of an invention. So we took some of those lovely vegetables, we used some of the fiddleheads, some of the leeks, and we used both parts of the leeks. So we used the, the bulb part as well as the leaves. And we just did a quick blanch on the fiddleheads, a light saute, saute with a little bit of the leeks. Um, we took some eggplant, we salted it just to bring out some of the bitterness, added that to it, gave it a little bit of a saute. Um, there was some lovely fresh local pepper, so we used a bit of that in there as well. Then we just sauteed it lightly, added the leek leaves right at the end so that they didn't get overcooked. And whilst that was going on, we were frying the trout in the pan with all the other vegetables. So you get a marriage between the trout flavors as well as the vegetables. And one help season the other. And then we just deglaze with a little bit of vinegar to give it a bit of a brightness and a bit of a sauce. And then garnish with some of the arugula to give it a bit of pepperiness. And that was our dish. So simple, clean, light, healthy, and delicious. Thank you.